guys. Put these bad boys on. While photographers are at it for a few extra seconds, I'd like to remind you about the, the regular routine. Uh, if you want to ask a question, please raise your hand a little bit ahead of time. Once you get the mic, please stand up, introduce yourselves, uh, ask your question, sit down and give the mic back. Thank you very much. Pour, uh, vous connaissez la routine. Si vous avez une question à poser, soyez assez gentil de, vous, de nous faire signe un petit peu à l'avance. Deux, euh, lorsque vous avez le micro, de vous lever, de vous présenter, de poser votre question, puis de vous rasseoir et de rendre le micro surtout d'avance. Merci. Photographers, please. Les photographes, s'il vous plaît, dégagez, vous serez gentil. Bonjour à tous. Hello everyone. Et bienvenue à la conférence de presse pour welcome the nice to the guys. Press and welcome conference to the, press the press nice conference guys. The nice guys. And I will <laughs> introduce the people who are sitting here next to me. Uh, if I were to go through the essential filmography of the gentleman sitting next to me, I'd be still rattling on on closing night and be barely at the bottom of page seven. <laughs> Thank you. Producer John Silver. Small. Joe Silver, sorry. Um, exactly 30 years ago, the gentleman sitting next to Mr. Silver uh, sold a script to Mr. Silver, uh, which uh, pitted a by the book detective reluctantly partner with a loose cannon cop named Riggs, uh, throw in the mix Danny Glover and Mel Gibson, mm -hmm. and you have Lethal Weapon, mm -hmm. and the rest is history, mm. with a twist. Uh, in 2005, he made his directorial debut and partnered Val Kilmer and Robert Downey Jr. and brought it to Cannes. The film was Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, and that it was 11 years ago, what the hell took you so long, Mr. Shane Black? <laughs> Since the film is called the, the Nice Guys, I'll start with the bad guy. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, light years away from the normal heart and eight and Magic Mike and Magic Mike XXL as professional killer John Boy. Correct. Mr. Matt Bone. Of the two gentlemen in the middle, I'm not even going to try, as Mr. Jackson Healy, Mr. Russell Crowe, and as Holland March, Mr. Ryan Gosling. <laughs> Last but not least, certainly, uh, the third nice guy, actually the nicest, actually a gal, as Holly March, Miss Anguri Rice. And the first question goes here. Hi, good morning. Uh, I'm Inge Merete Robelstam from Norwegian newspaper Dagbladet. Uh, I found the film an absolute delight, so congratulations uh, on that. Uh, we've all grown up with cop stories and detective stories, so I wanted to ask the directors and the two leads what detective stories they themselves have loved and been inspired by and why. And also to the two main actors, you have both played 
competent, serious cops before. This time you play perhaps not so competent uh, detectives. Uh, How dare what you. is uh, what is the f what's the fun of switching over to that, and what is the fun of uh, t playing around with this sort of role? Thank you. I'd just like to point out that I don't play a cop in this movie. <laughs> I don't even play a detective in this movie. I am a debt collector with aspiration. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, what was the question? <laughs> It, it, it's a great, it's a great script. It's a great role. They're great characters. You know, it's. Uh, it wasn't, I think, just fun subverting that idea. It was more fun just getting to work on a Shane Black film, uh, specifically because I grew up on them. So being in one was was so, sort of surreal and felt, you know, uh, oddly comfortable. And it's just uh, they're great flawed characters, and there is a dr dramatic undertone to it that I think is you know rare in in comedies. Even though I don't know if this is uh, I don't know how how uh, how you how do you describe this film, Shane? I think this is a comedy thriller. But I, I got to say, I go back to um, the movie that changed things. I saw a movie Ron Howard did called Night Shift back in the '80s, and they it's, it was sold as a silly comedy. But I went to see it and was surprised by this really kind of soulful and heartfelt relationship, this friendship by the end of the movie, I was sad to see, you know, stop, almost to the point of tears. And I thought, wow, isn't that something, that within the context of being that funny, you can actually tell an organic, real story that develops that sort of kinship. So that's what this was. Um, and it has detective roots because I think we owe that. I think every time I do a story in this genre, there's so many pioneers who sort of trod that territory that I owe to, to them to sort of carry the torch uh, for, these, for what has become my favorite you know, genre, the suspense genre. It's, you gotta keep that first and foremost. Make sure there's a strong mystery thriller and then let these guys just tear it to shreds and deconstruct it and be very funny. Question here. Good afternoon, Peter Hall from the Toronto Star in Canada. Congratulations, I'm great. How you doing? How you doing? Uh, question for all the three nice guys. Um, I, I'm thinking with a script this great, where you were allowed much ad-libbing, and uh, Ryan, with you in particular, that little uh, Lou Costello riff you do when you find <laughs> Sid Shattuck's body, was that uh, ad-lib? Uh, it was four in the morning and below zero, and I was just trying to keep myself awake. <clears throat> but in the Shane Black film, you gotta be careful, because he'll, he'll put that in. <laughs> he will put that stuff in. Um, the great thing about Shane as a director is that uh, I'm often not there, so they can just do it. Yeah, he's never there too. Yeah. He's in his trailer, so you can kind of get away with anything. Although he took you know many years to actually write the script, he's not precious about it, you know. So what's on the page is it's a map, but it's not necessarily exactly the map of of everything that he wants. And he has a, a the ability, and not everybody does, to just trust in the fact that we understand the spirit of what he intended. So if he says action and Bugalugs takes a left step, you know, <laughs> I'll follow. I'll follow him. And uh, you know, uh, Shane is like willing and enthusiastic about letting us explore things a little bit. You know. Hopefully the night before, not right before you yell action. Yeah, but these guys, I'd be a fool not to take advantage of the input that people this bright and this enthusiastic bring to something. Actors who are this good ultimately will do what even the, the, even the starting out actor in his garage who rolls up his sleeves, takes a pencil and marks a script, that's still the core of the craft and that's still what these guys do at the heart of it, is they go back to basics and they remember that to stay on top, you gotta remember to touch bottom. Right here. Hello, Thiago Civaletti, Universal Line Brazil. Uh, I'd like, uh, director and both of you, comment a little bit about the physical sense of humor of the, of the film, because uh, the party scene remembers a lot, remembered me a lot, Blake Edwards, La, La Party, The Party. And uh, Ryan, I think you managed very well to do some kind of uh, Jerry Lewis thing in the bathroom scene. So I'd like you to comment how it was preparing physically for this humor, thank you. <laughs> I think that <laughs> you have two physical comedians. This, the best kind of comedy for me is not one that takes its cue by being pretentious, but the one that 
is sort of more like a juggler on a street corner, consciously aware that they're going to throw tomatoes at you if you don't okay. keep it keep it lively. And so every once in a while, it's just we, we can do this the aesthetic joke. We can do this sort of uh, rarefied stuff. But then it's all right. Just let's go for <laughs> let's go for the bathroom gag and let's just go for it big. Um, these two, Ryan. Uh, was in particularly willing to just fling himself off of stuff onto other stuff. <laughs> uh, and sometimes there was glass in that in the middle. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, all we can do is just pray that he doesn't hurt himself on his next picture. Question here. Hi, guys. It's uh, Tom Westerholt, German Public Radio Network, ARD. Thanks for kicking my ass this morning. It was really a pleasure to watch that. Uh, qu a question to Russell and to uh, Ryan. Uh, the chemistry you have together in this movie is just purely amazing. Like you did the tenth film together or something. Um, it reminded me, I don't know if I should say this, but it reminded me a bit on Bud Spencer and Terence Hill in a weird way. In, in a way, in a way. Dude, now you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a really flattering uh, compliment. Thank you very much. That's cool. So, how, um, did you, uh, could you like, explain a bit how it was to team up together and to work together on this movie for you, both of you? Ryan has an explanation about the chemistry that I think you should all hear. <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, the Alexa has a new feature, it's a chemistry feature, and it's, they just do it in post. Yeah. Honestly, it's just like you lay it over in post and it, we have it feels real, doesn't no it? No connection whatsoever. It was no. all Russell did all of his work from New Zealand. Yeah. He worked with, uh, <laughs> he went to the Weta company where they do the Lord of the Rings yeah. films, and we just, they just, a lot of the time I was, I was literally just on the phone, yeah. Yeah. phoning it in. Phoning it in yeah. And then Shane, he just gets in post, he gets right, gives right. more chemistry. In fact, if you have a similar app and you could sort of do some adjusting in this conference, we'd also appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's Shane's film. You know, There's Shane a, writes incredible, you know, characters. That's, that's and nonsense. The dynamics these, between that's them. nonsense. These guys, and Russell gave the best explanation I've ever heard, which he says, chemistry, uh, it's really quite simple. We just learn to listen to each other. Question over there. Hi, it's Raffaella Serini for Vanity Fair Italy. Mine is just a simple question. Are you guys Batman? Do you consider yourself Batman? I'm more, I'm Batman, he's Robin. <laughs> Next. Somebody actually asked recently what superhero characters Ryan and I would be and I, said fat man and ribbon. <laughs> Hello, my name is Laura Sanchez. I'm from W Radio, Colombia. My question is for Russell Crowe. You, sh you shouldn't for... be on radio, baby. You've got a beautiful face. Oh, thank you. Get on TV. I appreciate it. Thank right. you so much. Just you are beautiful, advice. too. <laughs> and also for Ryan Gosling, uh, how did you build these two um, police detected that they are so hilarious, but they are also a disaster. How was that process to build that two characters? Thank you so much. We're not police. <laughs> <laughs> you guys saw this film, right? This yeah. is you saw that. You saw, you you saw, saw this is the nice one, guys. Right? Yeah. Screen, yeah. Okay. Directed yeah. by Shane Black. Does Shane Black's name come up <laughs> when you're watching? Yeah. I think Just the checking. police are different here. So there must be something yeah. like that. <laughs> They leap a lot. So, oh, so we feel like Colombian police. <laughs> I see. <laughs> They're Batman. Yeah. I don't want Shane to cut me off again, but I'm it's it's his it's his writing. The script, you know, it's it's there. I mean, it's 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 a it's a great. He's been doing this, you know, for a long time, and he's really he's mastered it. It's a genre unto he's a genre unto his own. And those characters there on the page, they came to life. It was like a joy to read it. It was so much fun. And, uh, you know, he's, he, he allowed us to contribute to it, obviously, but we really, I mean, th that dynamic was, was really there. Question over here. Uh, hello, I'm Alexander Bonjour. from Lizardo from National Grid Television. It's a question for Une question. Mr. Gosling and Mr. Crow. Uh, even though the ending of the film is not that uh, open, um, how would it sound having, making a sequel sooner or later? How much are we talking about here? <laughs> I'm really busy, man. I'm sorry. Really, really busy. Sorry, Ryan. I just can't do it. Oh, really? Yeah, sorry. Busy, oh, okay. busy man. That's fine, because I think I could do it oh, on my own, honestly. we can get that guy we were talking about. Yeah. Basically did anyway, so. What's that? 
you know, Gene to... has an idea for one uh, in the 80s, which... Uh... No, I just say we recast. I think it's simple. <laughs> All right. Question to Anguri Rice. Um, Angauri. Angauri, thank you. I have no problem. idea where it is. Where do you come from? <laughs> where have oh. you been previously sorry, in our film goers' lives? Sorry. Um, you, you hold more than your own in front of those two guys, thank yet you. you remain quiet today <laughs> here. Uh, thank you for saying that I, that I hold my own. I've been hiding in Australia. A long way away from Hollywood and all of this madness. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the first time you appear on screen? Uh, no, I was, I was in Cannes uh, two years ago for an Australian film that I did, but this is the first big American film I've done, so it's insane. You must have been three then. <laughs> What? You're so, you're so young. <laughs> Jesus, you were in Cannes already? You were a Cannes vet? Yeah, uh, two years ago, when I wow, was 13. Wait. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, that hurts. <laughs> uh, question. Okay, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I'm Darbaz Yunus from... Ruda Media Network, the International Kurdish Media Network from Kurdistan, North Iraq. I know that you now, that now have many, many problems in Kurdistan and the Middle East. I want to ask you that if you can send a message for the Kurdish directors and to Kurdish actors, if they can, uh, they can, do you think that they can, by comedy, send out the message of their pain and so out to the world? And thank you very much. I think that, uh, that it's useful to sometimes incorporate within a comedy a somewhat more painful message. I think that's common, and I would love to see the films you're talking about. Um, I hope they're represented here, and if they're not, uh, maybe you could point us out to some that you think are particularly great that we can watch, because I'd like to see those. Question here. Hi, Stephen from Belgium. A threefold question about the 70s. Mr. Black, why did you pick that era? Mr. Silver, was it hard to recreate LA during that era? And the cast, what did you get from that era? The 70s seemed a very good uh, window onto an era, in a way, because he, like in Chinatown, for instance, another detective picture, you had the 30s with the San Gabriel Valley land grab, the water rights issues. And I thought, you know, the 70s in LA, especially was still this destination for dreamers in LA or in America was to come to the coast <coughs> but it, it was really slipping so the prom queen aspect this glamour that you know people saw advertised had become the sort of tattered sort of lunatic alzheimer's version of the prom queen with the hollywood sign crumbling hollywood boulevard kind of a porn pit with every other storefront triple x you know and, uh, and the smog was so bad, you had actual air raid sirens telling children to go inside because it wasn't safe to play outdoors. And this was just a few years, 40 years ago in LA. I mean, that kind of faded dime store chic that it was still maintaining this illusion of, you know, glamour and luxuriousness, I thought was a perfect setting for a detective story. Uh, go ahead. Hi, I'm uh, Benjamin Nafegis for uh, Cine Seri Mag. Hi to you, uh, to uh, Mr. Blake. Uh, what, uh, why uh, do, uh, why do uh, uh, a buddy movie uh, to why uh, today? What, <laughs> what is doing a buddy movie today uh, in two far? In 2017. You can speak in French. <laughs> Why make a buddy movie today? You are a master in buddy movies. You made some in the 80s. What's the point of making a buddy movie today? with these two actors. How did you work with the actors? Why, why, why a buddy movie? How relevant is a buddy movie today? And why make a buddy movie with those two actors? I think that the buddy movie, once again, is just about people. There's a certain aspect I love about movies that are sort of heartfelt, where people 
who are kind of downtrodden, they've sort of given up, or they see themselves as at the end of the rope, find someone else has to come along to believe in them when they don't, to sort of love them until they can love themselves. And that kind of simple idea is infinitely variable. And here you have two guys who pick each other up, and I think it's always going to be the case that those dynamics work. And then, um, also in a detective, kind of a, you want some funny dialogue and it's kind of hard to say it to yourself. So you always want that character to bounce off the banter. I, these, the joy I felt listening to the banter these guys do back and forth, the throwaway stuff, the deadpan stuff, that's the bread and butter on which I could, I could do that the rest of my life and watch these guys do it. Question for Mr. Bomer. Uh, if I pronounce it right. That's correct, yeah. Thank you. Um, you come fairly late in the film. That means you have to establish your character extremely quickly and extremely efficiently. Possibly more faster than those two guys. How does one go about that? Well, I'm fortunate enough that several of the cast members speak about the character before I enter, which is always, you know, if you do a play and people are speaking about the character before you enter, it's, it's, it helps greatly. And Shane looked after me that way in, in many regards. Um, but he also gave me really great source material to, uh -huh. to work off of for the character so that by the time it was time for John Boy to enter, we had a running dialogue going together where I could just kind of jump in and play. And, and you know, if you're going to play a bad guy, Shane is the writer and director you want to do it for, and everyone up on this stage is someone who I'd always dreamed of working with, and I now include Anne Gowrie in that list, and so it was uh, a lot of fun. Defines Matt was extremely disciplined man and, and focused in his preparation. You know, as much as we jo joke around about there wasn't very little for me and Ryan to prep, uh, if you're going to step into this type of movie and be the bad guy, you have to embody threat. And one of the ways that, that he embodies that threat is his efficiency, the physical efficiency with the weapons. And it, that doesn't happen. You have to work on that. And so we, we were really gratified when we realized just how much work Matt had done and how that was translating onto the screen. When you say it's, uh, source material, you mean what? Books, films? Um, Cops. Shane, do you mind if I share? No, no, fine. The, the most striking one for me was probably Christopher Walken in A View to a Kill that we'd spoken about. Right. Um, but we had several others. I won't, I won't share them all. Um, there was a, a certain sartorial elegance and efficiency that I thought Alanda Law had and Le Samurai and some other things we discussed briefly just so we'd be, get on the same page. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Question? I've got a question. Go. That sign over there, is that a football score? Because <laughs> <laughs> good on the English, it's oh, been a long time the, since I've seen Only the French victory. win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> question here. Me again. Um, a question for Shane. Um, when I saw the movie this morning, I thought about um, it could be perfectly fitting for a series. Everybody's they're doing series these days, like for Netflix, Amazon, whatever. Uh, have you considered ever doing like this movie in a, in a serious way? Sounds weird, but no, we doing it in a serious? Absolutely. We, we had at one point done that preparation. We tried to make this a TV show. Thank God it didn't happen. Because what you have instead is these two guys who brought it to life in a much more vivid, much more full-formed way. And uh, I just, once again, I can't say enough about the, how privileged I am, not just to be sitting here with you people in an environment cheek by jowl with the best filmmakers in the world, but surrounded by the best producer and actors you can imagine. I'm the luckiest guy in the world, but no TV right now, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Question over there. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Hi, uh, Saraton TV from Uzbekistan and Belgium. I have a question for Mr. Russell Crowe on whether he uses the Stanislavski method uh, to prepare a role mm. and things like that. And uh, what's your method uh, more generally? I, I use the Russell Crowe method. <laughs> uh, I've, I've never been to drama school, man. I've never been to acting school. The only time I did any formal lessons, I, cl I studied classical texts for about three weeks. Uh, but I've been acting since I was six years old. You know, it's, uh, 
And over time, you get more and more efficient, I suppose, is the word, at getting to the center of what the character that you're portraying. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't even know what the Stanislavski method may be. I have no fucking idea. And <laughs> I, don't, I don't care to know, you know? <laughs> you just trashed a hundred years of tradition. <laughs> oh, fuck it, man. <laughs> Seriously, it's not that complicated. If you want to be an actor, work it out yourself. There you go. I actually like the old uh, Olivier quote, learn your dialogue and don't bump into the furniture. Right. Uh, That's Spencer Tracy. Go ahead. Hi, it seems to have gone around the room and come back to me again. Uh, can I ask uh, Ryan Gosling and uh, Andrew about how you worked on the father-daughter? Sorry, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And Gowry. How did you work on the father-daughter relationship when you talked about it? What did you think was the essence of, uh, of the dynam dynamic between the two? Thank you. Well, it became more like mother-son, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty quickly. So that's how we worked on it. We just went, ah, that's not going to work. Let's, uh, let's switch it. Reverse the roles, yeah. It was a lot of fun to work with you, and I'm, I'm really happy that Ryan played my dad because I think, obviously, if it were another actor, it would be a very different film and a very different relationship between Holly and March, but I'm happy with how it shows on screen. I was so impressed with Ngauri. I mean, first of all, that, that dynamic between those two characters is tricky, and I, I really didn't know how that was going to work. And then Ngauri came in, and just by the nature of who she is and how she is, it just, it answered all those questions for me. But I was really impressed just at how she she knows exactly where her character is coming from, what she would and wouldn't do. Uh, she had very, very strong opinions about things and they were always right, you know. She would, uh, she just, she came to the table like, like she'd been at it, I mean, I think a strong case can be made that she's 35 years old and she's been just like working in theater in, 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 in Australia all that time. But it felt like that. It just felt like um, she was immediately a, a pro and she's obviously very gifted and it was really fun for us to get to work on something so early for her because uh, it's, it, it, it's clear that she's, she's going to be the boss of us all one day. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, on that note, I'm afraid our time is up. Thank you all okay. very much for being here. And all the best. You don't talk?